What's the word, y'all? I have a, a bad announcement to, to say at the top of this video. And it's going to... It might make or break whether you, you watch this channel or not. I am no longer coordinating my outfits to the topic of the video. Now, understand, y'all really loved when I wore Houston Rockets shirts when I was talking about the Houston Rockets. But as of right now, I am too lazy to change my shirt. So we are wearing whatever the heck I have on when news breaks. And if you want to unsubscribe... I guess you got to do it. Yeah. Today we're talking about the Houston Rockets, man. We dropped the video a few weeks ago, basically after Daryl Morey has stepped down from his position as whatever his technical title, general manager, vice president, whatever the heck it was, executive. All of those things mean the same to me as a as an NBA casual. Um, when he stepped down, we talked about the future of the Houston Rockets because they've been good enough to have the highest active playoff streak now because the San Antonio Spurs missed it for the first time in 22 year, 23 years. Um, so they had the longest active playoff streak. They were good enough to make the conference finals a few times this decade, but never good enough to get over that hump to get to a championship and win a championship. And with Daryl Morey stepping down and the Russell Westbrook, James Harden thing not really working now, we really had a conversation about what the future of the Houston Rockets look like. Before we get into it, be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. We hit 300,000 subscribers this morning, and I really appreciate that, man. Uh, it means a lot. It's just me and the microphone talking about hoops, so I appreciate everybody that subscribed to the channel. Be sure to join. Now, when I woke up this morning, there was reports basically saying that Houston Rockets stars Russell Westbrook and James Harden um, expressing concern about the future of the organization, which makes sense. This team, the way it is orchestrated right now, has a definite ceiling to it, and that ceiling, spoiler alert, is not a championship. So it makes sense for a guy like like James Harden, who is 30 years old, 31 years old, and it makes sense for a guy like Russell Westbrook, who's also around there, to be like, hey, um, the next couple years we won't be a contender, so what the heck is going on here, right? So that was the report earlier this morning, and right before I hit record on this video, um, it has been said that Russ wants out of Houston. Boom, bam. I think that was Shams that broke it first, so the big – you know how Woj has bombs? The Sham, somebody has to figure out something for Shams because Shams bomb doesn't – eh, it could work. Basically saying that uh, Russell Westbrook wants out of Houston. And Houston Rockets Twitter and Reddit is uh, going crazy, man. This is about to be a super eventful offseason for y'all again. It's always an eventful offseason for the Houston Rockets when you think about it because Daryl Morey was their guy in charge and he loves to make trades. Last year you made one of the bigger trades of the offseason. This year you're probably going to do it. And I just dropped a video yesterday talking about Chris Paul to the Phoenix Suns possibility and I mentioned how that was probably going to be the biggest trade of the offseason. I guess not anymore. The Russell Westbrook wanting out, and if Russell Westbrook wants out, who knows what's going on with James Harden. Now, it had been reported that the Houston Rockets have no intention to even really explore James Harden in, in a trade package. But why not now? You know what I'm saying? And this, this is so funny how things work because from my understanding when it comes to the way this Houston Rockets team looks right now, when it comes to uh, Chris Paul being traded away for Russell Westbrook, that was a combination of three people's – oh, I'm sorry – I'll say three people's idea. The first one is the ownership of the Houston Rockets. They saw uh, the Chris Paul contract as the worst contract in the history of sports is something that, that was said, which is like, relax. You feel me? Just re re the So the ownership wanted Chris Paul gone. Um, Daryl Morey, we don't really know. He ain't really spoke on it, but I, he was the executive here, and I guess you just do whatever the heck your boss tells you to do. But he had to want that trade to some extent to make it happen. And the last one, is James Harden. James Harden wanted to play with Russell Westbrook again, and it lasted all of a, like a half a season, and now one of them wants out. And the reason he said that he wants out is because there's a lack of accountability, is what it says. And then the second was that he wanted to be the primary ball handler again. Lack of accountability. A James Harden team? Lack of accountability? No. No, nah, th those are the old things about James Harden. Um being in the club all the time. I don't know if he still does that. But lack of accountability, and he wants to be the primary ball handler again, which makes sense for a guy like Russell Westbrook. Think about his entirety of his career. Yes, he has played with great players like Kevin Durant. He's played with great players like Paul George. But he had always been the primary ball handler. You know? He had always been. And now with James Harden, who has, like, the highest usage rates in the history of basketball, Russell Westbrook is resulted to playing off ball a lot. And that's just something he's not a fan of. Now, the real question is, because it's the most polarizing thing. If you do not know, Russell Westbrook is one of the most polarizing players in the NBA. He might be number one on the list of polarizing players. Some people see him and still see a top 
point guard in the league, and some people see him as past his prime and on a bad contract. I don't know personally where I sit because there are periods of time um, like when the, the calendar had turned for the 2020 season, when Clint Capella was out the door, Russell Westbrook had a month right before the All-Star break when he was incredible. We're talking about basically averaging 30 points per game, uh, shooting it efficiently for him. He had stopped shooting three-pointers, so he was just getting efficient basket after efficient basket after efficient basket. And then there are also times where he just doesn't look good. And I'm going to throw the bubble out because I guess he was dealing with an injury and I'll throw the first month or so of the season out because I guess he was dealing with an injury, whatever it may be. One of my coaches used to say, if you're on the court, you're 100%. You know, and I, guess, I guess that's something we could think of. If you're on the court, you're 100%. I don't want to hear, oh, I, I missed that shot because my ankle hurt. Then get the hell out of the game. But anyway, there are periods of time where Russell Westbrook looks in incredible, and you could take that month-long sample size and say that. But there's also times this season where Russell Westbrook looks lost. Russell Westbrook th throws up bad shots. Russell Westbrook is a turnover magnet. So I, that's why he is a polarizing player because it is undoubtedly we all have to agree that Russell Westbrook is extremely, extremely talented. It's just sometimes it just doesn't look like it, right? So if we're going to trade... Russell Westbrook, which is an inevitability right now, because if a man wants out, a guy of his stature in the NBA, if he wants out, you're going to trade him. You're going to, especially considering things didn't work out. So you probably were thinking about trading him whether he wanted out or not. So what is the value of Russell Westbrook right now is the real big question. It had been reported before Russell Westbrook wanted out that teams like the Clippers, which is such an interesting thing because how the hell did the Clippers end up with Russell Westbrook without trading Paul George? And maybe that was the idea. I don't really know. The Clippers were interested in Paul and Russell Westbrook because Kawhi Leonard went into the front office and said, give me a point guard. And um, we have, yeah, yeah, that Russell Westbrook fits that qualifications point guard and a good one. And there was also rumored that the Knicks were looking at him and the Knicks were or are trying to get some stability in their, their organization for the first time in a long time. Chris Paul rumors have been there, of course, and now the Russell Westbrook rumors will be there. Um, but what are some other teams that could potentially want him? I would I would definitely see a team like the Orlando Magic wanting uh, Russell Westbrook. A team like, bro, after, listen, this is crazy. After they got eliminated from the playoffs, I'm talking about the Houston Rockets, I made a joking trade on Twitter I was half joking, and it had to do with Blake Griffin being traded for Russell Westbrook. And if the Houston Rockets are hell-bent on keeping James Harden, that may be something they should express. That, that, that They have to explore that. You know what I'm saying? So, but all this is, so let's, let's go back to it. Let's go back to it. What is Russell Westbrook's trade value? We're going to see very, very soon because the, the front office and stuff is opening up next week. Rumors are flying left and right, and he will be traded this offseason. There's no way this man said he wants out and he's not out by the beginning of next season, which is, um what, a month away? He will be getting traded. But what does that trade look like? What do the Houston Rockets want? What would they want? Again, if they're trying to keep James Harden, I'm guessing they want to stand to contention. So I don't know if the... The Knicks have anything that you would want if you want to keep James Harden and stay in contention. The Clippers obviously have a lot of things over there that you could potentially want. The Orlando Magic may have things to help you be just good, like Aaron Gordon. You know, I, I, again, I, I'm just I'm just spitballing right now. But if your goal is to not hit reset, which you should be doing, you need to hit reset. Because let's be honest with, with each other. After Russell Westbrook is traded, no matter what you get back in the trade package, unless you super finesse somebody, which doesn't seem like a likelihood because people realize what Russell Westbrook may look like now. Unless you super finesse somebody, you're not going to make a trade to get James Harden a championship. You're not. And I know James Harden wants to stay true to Houston. And I know they said they want to keep him. But you have to think about the future of your franchise. And if you do not think about that hard reset, James Harden, one of the greatest shooting guards of all time, is going to rot in Houston. And I don't think you want that. James Harden's trade value is as high as it'll ever be again. You know what I'm saying? If you waited an extra season and tried to trade him, his trade value is not as high because there's one less season off his contract and he's one year older. I think that they should be in that front office really contemplating what a James Harden trade looks like. What do Russell Westbrook trades look like? Because if you're trading both of those two assets, of course not together, but you trade them to different teams and make different deals, 
you can put together a team for Houston's future like that. James Harden is going to be super valuable. I, again, we don't know about Russell Westbrook. We can agree that James Harden is going to be super valuable. And we talked about a potential Ben Simmons, James Harden swap. If you can turn James Harden to Ben Simmons for a rebuild, you're winning. And then you trade Russell Westbrook to the Knicks for the pick that they have, Kevin Knox, Julius Randle's expiring contract, whatever it may be, you're winning. You just got an extra pick for a guy that's on a contract that is is like one of the worst contracts in the league. I don't know what a Russell Westbrook trade looks like, but I'm waiting for it. And guess what? Once he is traded, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up this microphone. I'm going to turn on this camera, and we're going to talk about it. Let me know what you think. Russell Westbrook wants out. What's the best place? And this is a question I saw on Twitter. How would you feel if your team traded for 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 Russell Westbrook? I'm not don't don't tell me what you're trading away. But again, like I mentioned, Russell Westbrook is such a polarizing player in the NBA. I wonder what you as a fan would feel like if your team traded for Russell Westbrook. All right? I'll see y'all soon. Peace.